All right, welcome back. So, as we were showing earlier, we drilled some holes. Uh, me and Miss Rowe decided since we have three openings, we're just going to go with three bolts. That should hold it just fine. But you kind of get an idea. This would be a six foot. We have a six foot four by four post. This would be the six foot four by four post. It would be, um, what did we say, two feet in the ground. And then we would have lag bolts all the way through. Now, I was telling you about the big hog. I'm going to have to go out there and check out another feeder we did that he was able to rip the top off. So I don't know if he ripped the feeder off the base or if he actually ripped the whole feeder off the 4x4 four four post. So I'm going to have to go out there and check it out. However, our solution to that is, if that's the case, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole here all the way through the 4x4 four four post out the other side and do the same here. Then we'll get a piece of all thread and run it through, bolt it on either side. And then we'll, that all thread will basically cross each other like this. And this four by four, that will keep it from coming off. Now that's not saying he may not, may be able to rip the this off the base, but he won't be pulling the whole thing off this four by four post. So now you've kind of got an idea about this. This is the top. So again, this is what I was telling you. We just took a 4x8 piece of um, OSB and we've cut it in half. And now I have done something with my block. Okay, so here's the block. Now what we did before in the past is we had a circular thing. I call it a propeller. We had us two circular things we set them on there and then we set our propeller on that that's what locked the top down to keep it from flipping off and blowing off and things like that we come up with a little bit something different instead of having to try to cut two circular things we found that this piece of um this was a piece of our four by eight we found that this piece of four by eight that we just cut a little end of it off we did a two by four on the other one this one we're going to do this piece of four by eight or two by eight, I'm sorry, I say keep saying four by eight, two by eight. We're going to put our two by eight here, and then our um, pieces will go here. I'll show you how that works. Give me just a second. Let me get the two pieces we need. So, we'll attach this piece like so. Now, I'll use two screws. Now, I did something... Uh, a little bit different um, and I'll show you what I did so that because again I'm not a not a carpenter by any stretch of the imagination but well and, and again this is the hard part right here So, keep forgetting where I left my screws. <laughs> so, these screws will go through. Then we'll go around here. None of this is precise. I haven't been given any precise measurements because it's not precise. I, again, I'm not a carpenter. Um, I do the best that I can do. Um, somebody else, actually, uh, a friend of the family's, has been a friend of the family's for a long time, actually built these feeders similar to these um, years and years ago for us. And I've just kind of improved a little bit. One of the things is we went to the 4x4 four four post versus trying to find a piece of um, telephone pole. The telephone pole is kind of hard to find. Um, so instead of finding a piece of telephone pole, we went to the 4x4 four four post. Again, me not being a carpenter, it's a little easier for me to build that frame for the 4x4 four four post. One of the things that we've changed this year is this piece right here. So instead of having the two circular pieces, which is, I think we're using a quarter inch piece of plywood and making the circle. We're using a two inch piece. It'll allow it to drop it's down in there. So much <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys have no idea. Yeah, the, the cutting a circle is, is 
Now, Miss Rose, she she is a lot better. Uh, I I'm mean, the yeah, she's the woodworker. She is by any stretch of the imagination way better at cutting a straight line than I do. Uh, my I could cut S's real good if I'm trying to cut a straight line. If I'm trying to cut an S, I'll cut a straight line. So, but uh, but yeah. So we we found that this is a lot easier to attach to the a lot easier to maneuver as well. Well, and that and that's another thing. Again, you know, me and Miss Rowe, we're getting a little older, so it's a lot easier. We want to try to make this top as light as possible, still make it as durable as possible, so it stands up to the test of time, but make it as light as possible. And this right here makes it a whole, whole, whole lot lighter. One of the other things is... As Nana and Papa's that are out there still enjoy hunting as well. Well, yeah. And, there, and you know, you, you may be fortunate enough that you can go buy a feeder. And a feeder works just fine for you. And that's all fine and dandy, and I think that's great, and I've got nothing against buying feeder. Um, I'm just giving you an option. Well, we enjoy making. And, and I do, and that's true. We, I really enjoy getting out here with my wife. I'm out here with my grandson and my two dogs, and we're in the backyard, and we're building feeders for deer season, and we love it. My grandson here in a few minutes is going to be painting these. We're not going to show you the painting. You can paint them whatever you want. You can stain them. You can paint them. You can put Thompson's water seal on them. We talked about putting um, a rubber, that rubber coating. Um, I don't forgot the name of it now, but it's a rubber coating. You can get it at uh, Home Depot. I think it's $200 for a five-gallon bucket. A little expensive, but if you're going to do a bunch of feeders, it's worth the money. Rubber coating on the top will allow no rain to set up here and, and stuff like that. So, but for now, we're just going to stick with painting them. The thing about it is, is these are so easy to build that if we need to take the top off and replace it next year, man, we can do it. it it's not that big a deal. I believe if we paint these before we put them all together and put them out there, then these things will last at least two seasons. At least two seasons, if not maybe three. But what I was telling you was, now, the, the other screws that I was using, we're going through the top side like this. I wanted them to go through the top side. I wanted these to go through the top side. So the idea behind that is, again, I'm not a carpenter. Um, and I'll wind up taking those screws out. But I wanted to see where I needed to put these screws on the top side. So this gives me an idea right here. Then I need to go here. Well, these screws are just not on the grab very well. I can't stand over that, so 